Hello, friends. In this episode, we're going to try and get a static site running on Azure. I mean, how hard could it be? I've got this static site here called the URList. It's a view app. It's built with TypeScript, and I'll include a link to all of the source code in the video description and repo. Now, this is a pretty complex application. There's lots of files, as you can see here, in folders and assets and all sorts of things. And when I run this thing locally, it uses Webpack to serve up my files so that I can work on this project. And whenever I make changes, they're reloaded live. It's amazing. But when I'm ready to deploy it, I have to run npm run build. And that's how I get this dist folder up here. All of the files, all of the pomp and circumstance of this project turns into just the files in this dist folder here when we're done. That's all we need to run this app in production. In all of my previous episodes, I've been deploying sites to Azure App Service, which is Azure's platform as a service product. In the case of a static site, though, we don't need something as compute intensive or as powerful, rather, as app service. It's just overkill. It's like mosquito hunting with a shotgun. We just don't need that much power to serve up some static files in this dist folder here. I checked around with some folks here at Microsoft, and the recommended way to run a static site is actually on Azure Storage. Yes, so Azure Storage is exactly like it sounds. It's a place to store things in Azure. It's like a giant file share in the cloud, but it can also serve up static web pages, and that's exactly what we've got here. And there are some huge benefits to using storage over something like App Service. So first off, the big reason is that it's cheap, and I'm cheap, so I love that. Or at least that's what I was told, so I went over to the pricing page to try to figure out when they say cheap, what do they mean by cheap? How cheap is cheap? The release post for static site hosting in Azure said that static site hosting is priced the same as blob storage. If we look at the pricing calculator, we can choose block blob storage, which I am assuming is the same thing as blob storage because there are no other blob storage options. And the type is general purpose. We'll leave that the same. And we want uh, the hot. So it's always on. We'll leave the redundancy the same. And after that, it wants to know how big the files are that we're going to store. Well, I don't know. How big is our entire dist folder? Uh, to figure that out in bash, we can run this du-sh command on our directory, and it will give us the size. 1.8 megabytes. So I think one gig is, is probably going to be more than enough. we got plenty of room to grow here. For the next section, we aren't doing any write operations except for when we upload the project. So every time we deploy, we're doing a write. And how many times do we actually even do that per month? I mean, if we said 1,000, surely that's the max. I can't imagine we deploy more than 1,000 times in a month. Uh, so, but we're going to have one write for every file. So we need to know how many files are in our dist folder. We can find that out with the ls command, which we can then pipe to the wc command, which I think stands for word count, but, but don't quote me on that. But I do know if you pass an l to it, it gives you the file count. So, okay, 14 files. So if we're going to deploy 1,000 times a month, which there's just no way we will, that would be 14,000 writes. I feel like I'm being more than, more than generous here with this figure. Read operations is what happens when our site is served up. So we've got 14 files. If our site is accessed 50,000 times in a month, that's 700,000 reads. And that's it. We don't have any data retrieval or data write. That's for archives as far as I know. Like if you've got data that's sitting on a cool disk somewhere and you're trying to pull it off of that disk and make it hot, uh, we're not doing any of that. So what's our grand total here? Whoa, 37 cents. What a steal. Let's get on this. But wait just a minute here. There is also something else that we have to consider in Azure, and that's something called egress. Whenever you have data that leaves Azure, you get charged for it. Doesn't matter what service you're using, if it leaves Azure, you're paying for it. These are bandwidth charges. This page here goes over what the egress in Azure costs. It's the same no matter which service you're using. Our site is 1.8 megabytes big. If it's visited 50,000 unique times in one month, that's, let's see in the old calculator here, 50,000 times 1.8 is 90,000 megabytes. And 
We can divide that by 1024 and that gives us 87 gigabytes. According to this page here, we get the first five free. So let's go ahead and take those off. Nice. So roughly 83 gigabytes of bandwidth. All right. Now, if we multiply that times what's essentially 0.87 cents, you can see it goes down the more you use, but eight cents is kind of right in there. That gives us a grand total of $7.21. Now let's add that to our whopping storage cost of 37 cents. And we got a grand total of $7.58. Not too bad. And remember, this site is going to get cached in the browser, so that helps a lot too. In other words, if the same person who's used the app before is using it again, it's likely they'll be served from cache in their own browser and not from storage. However, you could see that if your traffic goes way up, you're going to pay for it, right? So let's say your site gets super popular and you're doing 10 million unique visits per month that can't pull from cash. That's roughly $1,500 per month in bandwidth charges. Of course, when your site is that popular, $1,500 is nothing to you probably if you've monetized it correctly. And that's why storage is great. It sort of scales as the success of your project scales. That's nice. Okay, now we understand the benefits of the cost and how that works, which, let me tell you, puts you way ahead in the game because pricing ain't that easy to understand. But you know what is easy? Creating and deploying this static site to Azure Storage. First, I'm going to get the Azure Storage extension for VS Code. And that makes it so that we can do everything with the mouse all clickety-clickety, which is how I like to roll. And let's create a new storage account from the storage extension. So we'll just right-click this subscription here and say, create new storage account and we'll give it a quick name and take most of the defaults. All right, perfect. Now, after I was done creating the storage account, I figured that I could just deploy my dist folder by right clicking it because that seems logical. And sure enough, there's a deploy static website option. But in that menu that comes up, my storage account isn't there, which is weird. I mean, I see it here in the side, but it's not one of the options for deployment. All right. Well, when in doubt, consult the command palette. So let's just look at what other commands are here for storage. If we just, just look for storage. Configure static website sounds, sounds pretty promising, so let's do that. Oh, no, it's not in this list either. So well, I bet what you have to do here is you have to start at this menu option and choose create new one at the top here. But that's not what we did. But I bet you if we go back and try to right click the storage account itself, that we can probably configure it. Yep, we can. So we can configure it right from here. All right. Now, my index file is, in fact, index.html, so that's cool. For the 404 page, I happen to know what this is because we've been talking about this a lot here and how this should work in storage. My app is a single page app and it uses history-based routing, or rather the history API in the browser. That means that it functions like a website, but all the routing is handled by the JavaScript running in the index.html page. There are no hashes or anything like that in the browser. These look like actual URLs. Here's my router file where I'm defining all the routes. All the routing is up to me, and that includes the 404 or the case where a route is requested that does not exist. So what we want to do here is just tell Azure Storage to send back the index page if any route is not found. In other words, no matter what happens, always return the index page. We'll handle it with JavaScript. And now let's deploy with a right click like a champ the way God intended. and. Boom, it's deployed. Fast, right? Right? Yeah, it's way, way fast to deploy to Azure Storage. It's just like the cheapest, fastest, and most efficient way to host your static site. That is definitely true. No web server, no configuration, just speed. I love it. Now, there's a bit of a catch here because there's always a catch, right? And the catch here is that the 404 we configured, if I open the DevTools and try to go to a route that doesn't exist, we'll see a 404. But the response body of that 404 is the index.html page itself. There's, there's the markup right there. This means that automated systems on the net will see the 404 code and they may or may not work properly. So, for example, Google and Googlebot cannot index our routes because we're returning them under a 404 and it will parse that as an error. It can index our main site, but nothing in the routes. 
another instance where this shows up is on things like social media where we have embeds. If I copy in the root of my site on LinkedIn, I get this nifty little description here, this nice graphic. This is really good for uh, interaction and impressions. These little graphics just perform better in terms of engagement than hyperlinks do. But if I try to copy in one of the app routes, yeah, you see it can't find it because it's getting a 404 and it doesn't know to just display the contents of the 404. And come on, I can't have something like that on my LinkedIn cred, man. Now, until there is a better routing solution in place for storage, the 404 actually works pretty well. So there are some edge cases here, but other than that, it's a pretty flawless solution, uh, definitely in terms of speed and cost. Now, I'm hoping for a much better routing solution in the near future for storage, and that's what we're working on. But until that time, just be aware that the 404 does behave this way in Azure storage so that when you see those 404s, it's not a shock. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to check out all the other Azure casts and I'll see you again soon.